Welcome back to the shop guys. This is just a quick little video to hopefully answer a question, shed some light um, on a question that outside screwball Chuck asked in last um, live stream on the Amateur Redneck Workshop site um, on ER32s. I'm also throwing in some 5C collet material. Hopefully it helps somebody or sheds some light. See you next Friday. Okay, inevitably I will say something wrong, like calling an ER32 an ER11. So bear with me, guys. Um, when I first started this hobby, I went all for the ER32s, which I'll get into in a minute. And I've only recently gotten into the 5Cs because I bought the tool and cutter grinder from Char. So I bought the entire Imperial and metric sets, um, which in hindsight I didn't need to do. And I'll get into that in a minute. But it seems um, I did in one video um, show that it seems like there's no specifications to 5Cs. Um, they give diameters, but yeah, I do have one 5C, which say this is supposed to be an inch and a half. This guy on the back is an inch and a half, so they just don't go together. <laughs> there should be a tolerance where this is inch and a half minus, and this is inch and a half plus or something, but it seems that all the five C's, um, maybe it's luck of the draw, but are perfect. I can run this guy on the comparator stand and running a dial indicator all over it. I don't see any movement in the needle and flipping at 90, I can't see any difference. And yes, the dial indicator is only good to a thou, but I don't care about accuracy whatever this height is wherever the needle is on this surface is the needle in the exact same spot on this surface and it is so both these blocks are perfect and a kind of interesting i can just kind of see the grinding in these guys but there's scratches all over them like they've been lapped so I'm not sure if they lap these things to get them this perfect. I mean, it's on that indicator, I can easily see a tenth of a thou. Um, and I can't see, like I said, anything moving. And so I've run indicators all over this guy. This is ground and this is well ground. And um, if I put a test indicator, my Mitutoyo in here, finding the valley, this inside edge is perfect with respect to all four sides here. So the pros um, to this guy is, yes, you can use long stock in it. The other pro is how it captures. I mean, it's just, it's just pulled straight in. There's no twisting uh, of the collet. There's no twisting of your material, nothing. So these guys, Whenever I put this on the granite surface, I have no problems with the uh, uh, indicating a gauge pin with either of these guys. These are beautiful. The um, <coughs> drawback or con to these guys is you can see how they grab. And so if you put 3 8 this is a 3 8 if you put a three piece of 3 8 material in here, it grabs it perfectly. If you put a piece of material in here that's, say, 10 thousandths undersized, because of the way it grabs, it's going to grab the front, but the back end starts to wobble around. And I discovered that when I was trying to um, grind a broken drill bit, trying to take, change it into a cutting tool, it was slightly smaller, whatever I was call it, I was using, and I could see the trying to grind it, it was moving all over the place. I couldn't get the tolerances that I wanted. And that's when I realized the back is wobbling. And so that's why you don't need to buy 
the entire collet set. <laughs> Only the common size is three eighths, half inch, quarter inch, so on. But since I have them and I have the collet blocks, it probably will, all the collets could come in useful someday in the mill or someplace. So that's five C's. And the other thing is, you know, I said the Chinese ones seem to be beautiful. Maybe luck of the draw, maybe not. Um, but they do take care of all the outside threads. The tool and cutter grinder, the Shars, captures them using the threads on the inside. And I did scum, stumble, stumble, stumble across one collet that wouldn't seat all the way because the threads weren't done nicely all the way in. So I got a way of working around that. But So that's the 5C stuff. It, perfect. These are beautiful. Like I said, the ER32s I did start with, and I also bought the entire Imperial and metric sets, Chinese, and yes, they're all over the place. Um, so that's the con to it. Um, the other one is you gotta really examine these guys carefully before you try to use them. If the threads are dirty at all, the nut captures it at an angle. If there's any contamination in here, and I find it quite often, I think there was a, yeah, here's a piece, I don't know if you guys can see it. This is a piece of aluminum that was jammed down in here. Um, if there's any contamination, any place, even, you know, especially on the surface down in here that captures it, it will be off by a lot. So, uh, before, usually I don't care too much about, you know, super accurate or precision. Especially, you know, in the lathe, you don't care about run out because the second you turn something, you just got rid of the run out. Um, on the mill, if a cutter is wobbling, no, not that big a deal. But yeah, you do have to pay attention if you're trying to hit something to a couple of tenths. <laughs> um, so, okay, that's the pros. Um, at least in the blocks, you can still use long material. Um, the other big pro is how this thing is made. If you put something in here that's off size, 10,000 smaller than its 3 eighths, it'll capture the front and the back so you don't have the wobbling going on in the back. That is a big plus. Uh, especially when I do things on the lathe, because a lot of times, probably nine times out of ten, I'm trying to turn a piece of material that I've flipped around and turned so it's off size. And that's why I like having the entire collet set. Um, so, contamination is a big deal. Um, one of the big problems is they always come with this fixed nut. And when you torque it down, yeah, anything under 3 8 is supposed to torque to like 30 foot-pounds. 3 8 and over 50 foot-pounds. All I ever do is hand tighten them. I mean, that's it. In the mill, in the lathe, and it hangs on like crazy because of the surface area. But when you're using this type of nut and you're tightening it down, it's starting to tweak each of these little fingers. And so I think that's part of the reason no, it is part of the reason why sometimes it's pretty far off. Once I tuned into that, I wound up getting these nuts, which have a bearing in them. So it spins. So now when I lock it down, there's no rotational force on the collet messing things up, and it seats it just nicely. So um, the other thing is, yeah, the Chinese ones... I, I can get 6,000 um, variation from side to side easily. This guy, if you'll notice, has a mark on it. A few collets I bought are precision. This is one of them. That's why there's a mark on it. This guy should be within two tenths. So I'll take you over to the comparator stand here, put the 3 8 gauge pin in there with the... Um, well, actually, I'm going to use... I'm not even going to use this nut. I'm going to use the standard nut, which is going to tweak it. 
and show you what the results are. Okay. That looks like a pretty clear picture here. Got the camera between me and it, so I gotta reach around. But, all right, so this guy's sitting down and take him over there and find the high spot here. That's the high spot, so I'm right on the zero. Now if I flip it over, one, try to reach around the camera here. Get him in there. Uh, this is the 3 8 so I've got a .375 gauge pin in here. And yeah, that's the high spot. So it's within tenths. I can probably see when I play it back. Um, but this is a precision gauge block. If I put one of the generic um, Chinese ones in here, yeah, I'm off by six thousandths or so. It just keeps moving all over the place. So, um, yeah, um, you can check. I did check this surface to this surface and within a couple of tenths and even the back of this guy because I was looking at it going, this is ground in here and you don't grind anything unless you want it to be really accurate to some surface. So I did put this on the uh, surface block, um, granite block. Test indicator, good to uh, tenths, and checked it for the lowest spot, rotated it, checked it for the lowest spot, and, and it's within two tenths, easy. It was about a tenth and a half. So I'm not sure how they're making this thing, why they want this surface to be so precise to the outside surfaces, um, whatever, but there. So yeah, um, an accurate ER32, good to two tenths, cost more, but you know, it's worth it if you really need super accuracy.